Hokie dokie. Second and third examples for this problem. I'll try to do them much faster. I'm going to really uh, reiterate in this video the importance of completing the square, that method, completing the square with this function, and the importance of understanding transformations in general, like what makes a function shift up, down, left, right, a certain amount of units, and uh, what allows you to, or like what causes a reflection over the x and y axes. I would recommend understanding all that stuff. So what we're going to do is start by completing the square for the function g of x. In order to do so, we are going to write g of x here. And automatically, or, you know, right away, I'm just going to subtract the 31 on both sides. So we have it, you know, minus 31 on the left side. And then simultaneously, I'm going to go ahead and add that blank there for the, you know, part of completing the square. To complete the square, or to find what value goes here, we take this number, negative 12. We cut it in half. So divide it by 2. And then we square it. So we take whatever number is next to the x value, usually known as our b, if we're thinking like a, b, and c, right? So we take our b, we cut it in half, we get negative 6, and then we square it to get 36. So that tells us we're adding 36 to the right side of the equation. If we add 36 to the right side of the equation, we also must add 36, whoops, we also must add 36 to the left side of the equation. Okay, let's move this over as well. Let's keep going. Uh, let's simplify the left side a little bit. Negative 31 plus 36 is plus 5. We're going to simplify all this stuff down into x minus whatever number squared, and that number is 6. So x minus 6 squared is equivalent to all this stuff. To get that, we basically just take this number, and cut it in half or divide it by 2. So negative 12 divided by 2 is negative 6. So now we get g of x by itself by subtracting 5. So we have x minus 6 squared minus 5. Now, at this point in the problem, we can hopefully identify the right answer, again, just by recognizing what the shift is up or down. The shift up or down is 5. We're going down 5 from the original function because the original function had no shift up or down. There was no plus 7. There was no minus 8, whatever, on the outside of the parentheses. And so there was no shift up or down. So we've gone down by 5. Do we see any answer choice that talks about shifting down 5 units? Yes, just option D. So naturally, D is going to be our answer. I'll talk very briefly about how d is our answer, like starting with f of x and working my way to g of x, but I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it. Let's get started. x plus 2 squared is the original function. Let's start with the first uh, transformation, reflection over the y-axis. To reflect over the y-axis, we negate the x term. That's all we do. So negative x plus 2 squared. Then translate right for units. To translate right for units, we replace x with x minus 4. So we substitute x minus 4 in place of the x that was originally there, right? So now we have negative x minus 4 and then plus 2. And then finally, shift down 5 units. So I'm going to simplify what we have on the inside here. We have negative x plus 4 plus 2 squared, and then uh, what do we say? Shift down five units, so we would subtract five. Now let's simplify what's on the inside of the parentheses real quick. We have a negative x plus six squared minus five, and they've done one last thing to get from here to here. They've factored out a negative. So they factor out a negative from, x, uh, from negative x and six to get negative x minus six, the whole thing squared minus five, when you have a negative being squared, they just go ahead and call that positive x minus 6 squared. So when you square a negative, it becomes positive. So that's where they've gotten this from. Hope that makes a little bit of sense. Again, completing the square and just recognizing the vertical shift up or down is very necessary for that problem. Now, this one, here we go. Sometimes you don't complete the square. Sometimes you're given much weirder functions here, right? 
So you have to be a little more strategic, I guess. But I would still recommend rewriting this function if possible. So looking at this function, just starting by writing out this function, asking yourself, how can we rewrite this? My first step or, you know, step I would take is splitting up the fraction. Because what I recognize is that you can split this up like so and cancel out the x's there. So what we're left with is a minus 7 minus 1 over x. And then maybe if we flip-flop these, we get negative 1 over x <clears throat> minus 7. And we get this. So the purpose of me doing this or rewriting it like so was so that we could maybe try to get a glimpse at the original function in the new function. We could see maybe like how they might have gone from this to this. When it, and it's easier to see if it's written like this and not like this. So again, the biggest thing, the most helpful piece that'll help us identify the answer is the shift up or down. Now, the problem is there's, it looks like we have a shift down seven units and I think that might still be the case, but I'm struggling with the negatives and positives right now. So shift down seven units because there's a there's an answer with a shift down seven units and there's one with shift up seven units. I'm trying to remember which one makes the most sense. So this would be where I would highly recommend using your uh, educated guessing skills here. If we're trying to decide whether it's a shift down or a shift up, let's look at the other transformations in the uh, in these statements here. So this one says reflect over the y-axis, translate left three units. So I guess the question is like, do we see any remnants of like where three could come from? Well, in this, we had a plus three, so that might make sense. And then in option C, they say translate right six units. Could it make sense for six to be any part of these functions? I would lean towards no. I would hope you would too, just based on guessing skills here. So I'm hoping just seeing the negative seven, we could still rely on that to identify our answer. Um, and then now I'll talk briefly about how they got from this to that. I'll do my best. Give me, you know, bear with me. Uh, let's start with 1 over x plus 3. First step, shift down 7 units. We're going to shift down 7 units by taking this and subtracting 7. Easy enough. Now reflect over the y-axis. That means we negate the x term. And that's it. And then finally, translate left three units. In order to translate left three units, we replace x with x plus three. So see how we replaced this x here with just x plus three. We have this, and now somehow we have to show how this ends up being this. Let's give it a go. Let's distribute the negative on the bottom first. We have negative x minus 3, and then we have the plus 3, and then we still have minus 7. So we have a minus 3 plus 3. Those cancel. We're left with 1 over negative x minus 7, and we're pretty much done because we have negative 1 over x minus 7 just moving the place of the negative sign, right? So now this matches this. That's a super fun one. Um, please let me know if you have questions on these ones. They're very uh, confusing. I'm hoping this video is probably the more helpful one as opposed to the first one I did. It was a little all over the place, a little warm-up one to be honest, but I think both are still helpful. Um, again, know how to complete the square, understand transformations, and really rely on the shift up or down. That'll be your ticket to this problem. All right.